Well, hello and welcome to this introduction to Fire Talk. I am going to share my screen and we will start this presentation. Hi, uh, well, I'm Miriam. I work for Firely. Firely is a company that can provide you with all the software, tools, and training you need to bring fire to life. I have been a part of the fire team at Firely since 2012, and I do the basic training courses for our uh, company. So, well, introduction to fire profiling first, and perhaps, who knows, later on we'll see each other again for other sessions. So if you look at what Firely can offer you, part of the Firely ecosystem, and that's what we are going to take a look at uh, right now, is uh, where we focus on profile authors. So um, we are going to create profiles. Well, we're not going to, to create them in this session. But if you need to create profiles, what you can do is take a look at the Forge tool and also at the Simplifier site in order to collaborate with teams and to uh, publish your work. So that part is the profiling part of the Firely ecosystem. In this session today, we will cover the need for profiling. Uh, also, I will show you the fire conformance layer and which fire resource types are involved there and briefly discuss what profiles and extensions can do for you. We will take a quick look at packages and also at the fire registry uh, and then hopefully we still have some time for live Q&A. So why would you need profiling? Of course, we do have a fire specification and that's an international specification that is meant to be able to be used in uh, international uh, all kinds of implementations. But that doesn't uh, give you too much structure in some ways because sometimes you have extra uh, requirements that you need to be able to, uh, to express. Um, make sure that you make expectations clear between uh, organizations, what to communicate. So what we need is to make sure that we can adapt what the fire specification offers for your own use case and your own needs. So it's important to be able to describe for a certain context, which kind of resource types and which elements you can use for uh, this particular use case or context. Uh, also, if you take a look at the fire API, uh, which features of that are used and what kind of terminologies do we use? All these kind of things are part of profiling. It's important to have a way to make sure that you can structure these kind of usage statement, statements that you can make. The structure then can be used in order to be published and uh, for other people to make sure that they can work with that to, uh, to work together. So if you publish them, other people can find those structures and then they can make sure that their data conforms to the profiles you've created by doing some validation or making a user interface out of that structure that you've created. So what kind of fire resource types are involved in this fire conformance layer? we will encounter a certain set of conformance resources. And of course, it does depend on the focus of your particular use case. But what you will always or almost always uh, use is uh, the structure definition resource type, which is listed here for uh, the content part of uh, the fire structures. So the structure definition type is the one that you will most often encounter. But of course, we also have a whole list of terminology type of uh, resources. And we can also define other things like operations. We can create our own search parameters and things like that. And we have some other things to make sure that all of the expectations are clear. So for example, a capability statement or an implementation guide uh, resource. I have a couple of slides on those types. So as I said, the structure definition is probably the first one that you will encounter. This is a resource type that will uh, define a structure uh, and it does define all of the data types, all of the resource types and all of the other things like extensions that are in the fire specification. So also the fire specification is uh, uh, expressed through these fire conformance resources. But of course, you can work with them as well in order to make extra constraints on what's already out there. 
the operation definition is the thing to use whenever you want to define extra interactions on the RESTful interface. You can create a name for the operation and you can describe the input and output parameters and also give a textual description of the behavior of the operation definition. A developer can then take your operation definition and make sure that uh, on the server side that operation is implemented. Or if it's an app developer, they know what kind of uh, input parameters to send with their request. Uh, so this is a definitional type of resource and it still needs implementers to then work with that in order to uh, make sure that this particular operation is supported. Search parameters are out there as well. Uh, if you look at the FHIR website and uh, at one of the FHIR resource types, you can find the list of standardly defined search parameters at the bottom of each page. If you look through that list, you will see that not all of the fields are searchable by default. If you need support for search on a field that is by default not searchable, you can create your own search parameter. Also, if you have created extensions, of course, the fire specification doesn't know what kind of values can be in there and whether you need to be able to search on those. So for extensions, what you can often see as well is that people create custom search parameter resources that describe what kind of search uh, needs to be supported. Well, if you create a fire system, then you can also uh, make sure that there will be a capability statement resource describing the capabilities of that particular system. From that capability statement, you can point to the other conformance resources. Uh, so for example, if you've created structure definitions or operation definitions, or you've created a search parameter, you can point to those from within your capability statement and then list those uh, capabilities as being supported on your system as well. Sometimes the capability statement is also used to describe the minimum requirements for a system. Uh, so that's also an option that, for example, you get an implementation guide and you need to conform to that. That implementation guide may point to a capability statement listing the minimum set that you need to be able to uh, support. So within a capability statement, you can see a, a small example on my slide here, you will be able to indicate all of these things. Uh, you can indicate the list of the search, uh, sorry, the profile, the resource type supported, plus the profiles that uh, are supported on those resource types, uh, but also all of the interactions. So if you look from a restful point of view, you have a whole list of fire interactions that you can support, but you don't need to support all of them. Your capability statement lists them and just lists the ones that you do support. There's also a structure map resource type that can uh, create a map between two structures. So uh, you can use a structure map resource in order to make sure that you can transform from one structure to another structure. Uh, if there's any talk about fire mapping language, a tutorial about that, then they will mention structure maps and they will show you how to use them. Uh, but they can be quite powerful to uh, transform data. And that can be any type of data you can transform from HL7 v2 to fire and vice versa with the structure map. But that could also be between two fire versions as well. I did mention implementation guide and usually when I mention implementation guides, I uh, mean the, the documentation. So that could be a PDF, that could be a website, uh, but also in the fire specification, there is an implementation guide resource, which is the structured uh, thing that is your implementation guide. From within that structure, you point to your documentation pages, you point to all of your profiles that you've created and other conformance resources. And then you can use an implementation guide publisher to consume that implementation guide resources plus all of the other conformance resources that it points to uh, generating a nice website or a nice PDF. Here's an example of how that can work together. So in the middle, what you can see is that we have an implementation guide resource. It can point, as I said, to HTML or markdown pages. It can uh, point to images as well that are used within the pages. 
Uh, and then you can also point out to those profiles in the structure definitions, and you can point to the other conformance resources as well that were on my uh, first slide. So this is then a set of conformance resources that can be uh, run through uh, an implementation guide publisher in order to generate that website. Well, I already mentioned this kind of, uh, because as, uh, the, as we look at the FIRE core specification, you will also be able to find all of those conformance resources uh, that define the FIRE core spec. When we are going to create profiles, et cetera, then we will use those already existing structures and build upon those. So everything that I mentioned on the previous slides, you will find that in the fire core specification as well, um, meaning that you can also see this, uh, the structured data. And the fire website actually is created by publishing all of these things and running through all of the um, conformance resources and then rendering them for, uh, for the website. Now, what I think is really important to know is that each of those conformance resources that we've talked about, whatever type you choose to create, you will give it a unique identifier. That unique identifier is called the canonical URL. That canonical URL is created by the author of the conformance resource. And then wherever that conformance resource travels, it will not change anymore. It is that unique identifier. So uh, whether you store it on your server or it is stored on a, a public repository, uh, on those uh, particular different servers, it might have a different technical ID attached to it, but it will always have the same canonical URL, meaning that this is the thing to use whenever you want to retrieve a conformance resource. You search on canonical URLs, uh, and then you get back, hopefully, that correct conformance resources that, uh, that has that canonical URL inside. We have two examples at the bottom of the slide where you can see that this is usually the structure, the first one for any of the HL7 official um, conformance resources. They use hl7.org slash fire. Then they, uh, they take the structure definition in this case because that's the, the resource type involved. So the conformance resource type. And then of course they create a name for that. And in this case, that would be the standard patient. We do see that a lot of organizations, when they create their own profiles, also take uh, that kind of structure inside of that canonical URL. So you see an example here of uh, some imaginary country that we've created. Uh, then also structure definition. And then this means that we have uh, an, uh, a core patient for that alpha country, um, which is the name of my profile. If you don't create a structure definition, but for example, a search parameter, then you will be able to use that in the same naming system structure there as well. So uh, think about it when you are going to create profiles or other conformance resources, what should the canonical URL be? It should be something that reflects in the domain part, your own organization. Uh, and then you can take that same convention if you want. It's not mandatory, but it's really useful to be able to see from the canonical URL what type of resource this is. Now, I mentioned profiles and extensions because that is usually the thing that you uh, start working on first. And if I talk about profiles, I usually mean a constraint, defining constraints on a fire core data type or core resource type. I could also create a profile that's based on another fire profile. Then also in the modeling world, you will see that uh, it's also you loosely referred to creating an implementation guide or creating a conformance package, which is the whole set of fire conformance resources together. This is not a fire thing, by the way, the, the, the term profiling is just overloaded in the modeling world. As I mentioned, you can create profiles based on other profiles. Uh, so we can start out with the core profiles. Uh, that's just the main set in the fire specification. And then you could create, for example, uh, country profiles or national profiles that are based on the core. Uh, 
then within your nation you can have uh, regional profiles that derive from the national profiles and of course if we move further down this pyramid you see that we have a lot of organizational profiles that are based on the regional profiles in the end they are all based on each other so the organizational profiles they all are based on the core profiles with the dependencies in between as well if we look at it from the resources perspective you will see that all of the resources will always conform to the core profiles otherwise you would not be fire compliant so you will have to conform to one of the core uh, resource types and then of course if we move further down you will get less and less resources that conform to the more specific profiles If you create a profile, then you're going to create a structure definition resource. And uh, what you will have to choose is that canonical URL. You will give it a name and some other metadata is added to that uh, structure definition. Also, of course, you will have to choose what kind of other fire resource type or data type you uh, base your profile on. Within the structure definition, you will see that you have lists of element definitions. You have a snapshot component that has a list of element definitions, which is the complete picture, or you can have the differential part, which is the differences uh, on uh, what you base yourselves on. And then that will list all of the element definitions where you've made uh, one, uh, one difference. So in that element definition, you will be able to find, for example, the name of a field, the cardinality of a field and the data type that's used for that particular field. But also you can set any uh, fixed values on there. Uh, you can create bindings to terminology types of resources, so to a value set or a code system. Uh, and you can also uh, make sure that you fill in some mappings in order to help developers um, have an easier job of mapping if you already know other specifications as well. So that will be a lot of work uh, that's in that uh, list of element definitions. And of course, it is important to publish your work. Other people need to be able to find your uh, uh, work and then hopefully uh, can reuse that or can uh, try to create data that conforms to your profiles. So what you uh, can do is publish that to a repository uh, like the Simplifier platform, but I have another slide that also lists the uh, official FIRE repository as well. So once you have a profile and someone is going to create a fire resource instance that conforms to that profile, then we encounter that canonical URL again. So here I have an observation resource. It's a cholesterol type of observation. And we can indicate with something that is a profile uh, tag inside of that resource that this particular resource uh, conforms to a certain profile. That looks like this. I put in a profile tag in the metadata of that resource instance, uh, indicating that canonical URL. And that is basically my claim that I am conformant as this resource instance to that particular profile that's listed. Now, this is just a claim. So incoming data on a system should actually always be checked for those kind of claims, unless you are a generic fire system. But usually you will want to know whether this is true or not. So what we need to do is find that, that profile. We could try and resolve the profile on that particular uh, domain that's listed in the canonical URL. So in this case, acme.org. So we could see if acme.org has a fire server and then we could retrieve that structure definition from it. So suppose they have that fire server and they have uh, the option to retrieve uh, that structure definition from there that will result in this structure definition resource being sent back to me. And then of course I can use that to validate the resource instance. Now that canonical URL will list your organization name, but it isn't mandatory to have a fire server at that endpoint. Uh, if you don't have a fire server or don't want to create that fire server uh, on the endpoint, what you could do is instead of creating your own fire server, publish that work. So for example, to the public platform simplifier.net.
Now, if we're talking about profiling, you will also encounter extensions. This is because in FIRE you have that 80-20 rule. If a field is used in 80% of implementations, it gets to be in the FIRE resource type. If it's in the 20%, it has to be left out. This is something that the work group decides. And that also does mean that you might encounter bits of data that are very common to send in your use cases, but uh, not in the 80% of cases. So that field might miss. So for example, if uh, we have race and ethnicity, uh, then we see that in the US, they use that uh, and register race and ethnicity. But in the EU, it's illegal to have that kind of data stored. So this is one of the things that you can't put inside of the fire patient resource. You can't store race and ethnicity in there as fields because in a large part of the world, it's illegal to be on there. This also, uh, well, this, this could mean that it poses a couple of problems for you if you want to communicate that data still. And in that case, what we need to do is make sure that you add extensions to your fire resource type. Uh, so you can create your own extensions. Uh, there are uh, FHIRE predefined extensions available as well. So you could uh, check uh, what's out there on the FHIRE website. Uh, but extensions, actually, if you create them, are also a structure. So they will be in a structure definition resource. So again, that structure definition resource uh, will get that canonical URL. And whenever someone fills in an extension in the data, they will use that canonical URL again, indicating what kind of extension they are using to fill in that particular bit of data. Well, what you also will define, where can this extension be used? Uh, because you can use it on a top level of a resource or you can use it on a data type, but you can also walk within the hierarchy of the resource and put the extension on there uh, within the hierarchy, so not on the top level. If you are going to do the let's build session, then you will encounter building extensions as well. So that would be uh, my recommendation to take a look at after this session. Okay, so now we have an overview of those fire conformance resources and the main ones I've mentioned in this presentation. Uh, what you want to do next is create a set of conformance resources that belong together and perhaps point to each other and, and uh, are a, a con a conceptually uh, set that, that you want to uh, distribute together. So what we can do then is uh, create a fire package. So all of your structured definitions, your value set, your uh, search parameters, and all the other uh, fire conformance resources, you can put them together in that conceptually related set of fire resources and create a fire package out of that. For this, you will need to have a, a package server or a mechanism that can create those packages. But then, of course, you can also use that server to retrieve packages and know that you will always have that consistent set of conformance resources sent to you. Uh, if you are going to do some profiling, uh, chances are that you will encounter Forge, the Forge tool, uh, in order to create uh, profiles and extensions. And this tool is also a, a package manager tool, uh, meaning that you can use it to retrieve packages and download them to your system and then work uh, with them. So, for example, you could uh, download the Dutch core uh, resources and then create a profile based on the Dutch core patient profile. Well, as I said, it's really important to share your work, to publish your work. And um, uh, the FIRE official uh, registry is registry.fire.org. Actually, it's powered by Simplifier, so you will end up with a project on the Simplifier platform. But uh, it will list all of the uh, official profiles that are published by HL7 and the work groups. Uh, so uh, if you're interested in any of those official profiles, go to registry.fire.org and search on them. Also for implementation guides, you can find a registry on, on uh, fire.org as well. Uh, and there uh, we have a whole set of things that might be interesting. Uh, the implementation guides generated and uh, created a website out of an implementation guide resources. They are all published uh, on that registry uh, link that I have in my slides here. 
So as I mentioned, Simplifier platform powers that uh, official uh, registry um, and you can opt in with your projects to, uh, to be shown on the FIRE registry site as well. Simplifier also contains all of the HL7 prof profiles for the normal FIRE uh, resources and data types, uh, but also we have the HL7 affiliate profiles on there. But well, if you are in a, a private company uh, or if you are just testing out things, you can use Simplifier as well. It's a public platform, so anything uh, that you put on there will be able to uh, be retrieved by, um, uh, by others, uh, except for when you have a private project on Simplifier. Also on Simplifier, if you have an account, you can validate example resource instances against profiles, which can be really useful if you want to know whether the resource data that your uh, tool has created is conformant to a particular FIRE profile. So you can just uh, upload it or paste it into that uh, Simplifier validator and then choose which profile to validate against uh, and you get an outcome uh, out of that. If you have a, a project and other people are going to uh, base their profiles on profiles within your project, it's also possible uh, on Simplifier to see those kind of references. Uh, so that could be quite useful as well to see whether your profiles are adopted by other organizations. Simplifier also can create packages. We, we've just briefly mentioned packages. So if you need to create a package out of that pr uh, project that you've created um, with all of your profiles in there, you just publish them to Simplifier and then you click on the button create package out of this set of conformance resources. And then uh, the Simplifier platform acts as a package server. So anyone can retrieve packages uh, from that with any uh, tool that can work with the uh, with NPM. So that is a, a nice option there as well. Uh, the last bullet on here tells you that you can also create implementation guides on the Simplifier platform. So there is no uh, real need to create your own web server that holds that implementation guide. If your project is on Simplifier with all the profiles, etc., in there, why not create an implementation guide on it as well, detailing all of the things that developers need to know. So that was very quickly, the overview of uh, fire conformance resources. Um, of course, we do have a nice let's build a fire spec uh, specification track that will run throughout that day. So it will start right after this session um, uh, with the first uh, session creating profiles. Uh, and it will continue throughout the four days, each day is tackling a different aspect of uh, fire profiling or building a fire specification on top of the, of course, uh, the core specification. If you have any uh, questions after this session, uh, then you can always find me on Whova, just sending me a message and I will uh, get back to you. Okay, so uh, then I think we are nicely on time for the last part of this presentation, which is the live Q&A. So, um, well, let me ask you, uh, Michael, are there any questions that have come in on the chat? Yes, Miriam, there are five questions and I'll start with the first one, which is how many publicly available implementation guides specify operation definition? Oh, I don't know how many, but it is quite common actually, because uh, what you will see is that um, most often in a particular use case or context, we're talking about things that you can't do with normal restful calls with a read or a, a post. Uh, in, so you would some, most often you will need something extra. So um, I think in, in, I would say perhaps 80% of implementation guides on the uh, national levels, I have seen uh, custom operation definitions. Okay, very good. Second question is profiles, are they always built on single resource type and then extend or constrain it? Yes, you will always base your profile on uh, one of the fire core re uh, resource types, one of the fire core data types, or another fire profile, but it's only just one always. Okay, very good. 
uh, although, uh, Michael, I have an, another addition to that as well, because if we're talking about extensions, if you create an extension, you can make sure that that extension can be used on uh, multiple fire resource or data types. So on the extension definition, it is possible to indicate this extension can be used on patient, but also on practitioner and also perhaps on uh, one of the other fire resource types. Uh, so for extensions, it's a bit more flexible. You can create one and reuse in other uh, throughout a couple of resource types. All right, very good. Can you define a profile that has a structure definition that's more loose than the one in the base profile? For example, I may want to use uh, a U.S. core patient, but loosen one particular criteria because it's too limiting in my system? Yeah, that's a good question. And I'm sorry that I didn't address that. But the answer is no, you can only make more constraints. So you can only create more specific things. You can never make something that is mandatory in, in the core spec or in a profile that you're based on. You cannot make it optional because it would mean that you are not conformant to that profile anymore. Uh, so what you would have to do is, is then in that case, uh, just Take a step up. Uh, so don't base your uh, base your work on the US core patient, but base your work on the fire patient, and then perhaps do reuse the the extensions that are on the US core patient because uh, you can just have them separately on your own profile. All right, very good. Uh, general question: uh, I understand these sessions are recorded for viewing later, but is the slide deck available for download? And, and in the uh, upfront slides that we had, it did say that it they are available on the WOVA app. So yeah, should they, they, they should be made available. I'm not sure uh, how long it will take to, uh, uh, to be available, um, but they will certainly uh, be up there. Uh, I hope it will still be during Dev Day so you can review them uh, yeah. during that. I think the videos are uh, up there even quicker. So if you want to rewatch then, uh, then you can do that. Uh, uh, well, I think tomorrow already. All right, next question says, Implement implementation guide sounds similar to packaging. How do we differentiate one from the other? Another? Uh, an implementation guide should actually just be seen as that, the, the guidance that developers need to implement a certain use case or context. So it's more focused on the, the extra explanations, the text, etc. And then from there, it points to all of the other conformance resources. They are not part of your implementation guide. In the end, of course, the rendering will um, read them in and then render those structures on a nice website or something like that. Uh, the conformance package is just all of those conformance resources packaged nicely together in a distribution file so it can be distributed uh, correctly it's versioned correctly and so you will always know that that conformance package has all of the resources you need if you need to uh, implement a particular use case or context but the implementation guide i see that more as the documentation that is extra um, you do see also organizations that do not create an implementation guide resource they create all of their conformance resources but then create a separate website or wiki pages or something like that in order to create their implementation guidance. All right, last question. Are there any publicly available profiles that can be leveraged? How would these align with other API standards like open API? I'm not quite sure if I understand that question uh, completely. Um, so if any of the fire profiles is uh, published, then it is published as a fire structure definition. If as soon as you have something structured, then of course you can use such a structure to do something with, and then for example, uh, use a structure map resource in order to take that first structure, that fire structure, and for example, transform the data that gets into uh, another standard and that can be anything uh, other uh, than fire or could be fire as well um, but i'm not quite sure if that answers the question 
uh, in the actual uh, chat or question and answer, there is an answer from Angus McAllister. He says that the fire implementation guide registry lists a lot of these and he gives the, the link. And then in addition, the companion website, simplifier.net, uh, provides a lot of additional information related to implementation guides and the profiles that they include. Yeah, but I don't know necessarily uh, whether they would link to different standards and then explain things about them. Uh, of course, the platform that uh, that was mentioned, the Simplifier platform or the registry.fire.org will give you access to publicly available profiles for FIRE. And also that uh, guides registry will give you access to implementation guides. And if the authors of those have uh, the need to uh, work also with other standards and, and try to relate fire to those standards, there might be uh, some information in that. Yes. All right. Very good. That's the end of the question. Okay. So are there any other questions coming up? Uh, perhaps uh, if anyone wants, uh, we can allow you to unmute. So I will push that button. So now you're allowed to unmute yourself. So is there anyone else that hasn't put a question in the chat, but does have a question for me at this time? Okay, I see nothing happening. So hopefully you're all full of information. Uh, this was just meant to be the overview of what you can do with profiling, which fire resources uh, are part of that. Uh, but I, if you really want to create profiles, then I would suggest that you uh, visit the next session uh, with my colleague Ardon, who will uh, guide you through an exercise creating profiles, extensions, and then throughout the rest of the days more so you get hands-on experience. Well, thank you all for attending this session. And um, hopefully, if you have any more questions, you will find me on the Whova app and ask me questions there. Uh, and otherwise, I will um, uh, wish you a really good rest of the dead days. So thank you and uh, see you around. <laughs>